let's talk about different kinds of controversial issues. We're gonna talk about three in this section over here. But the first one is executive compensation. How much is too much or not enough? In this case, you have an example, the average compensation for a CEO, 17.2 million. That's a lot of money. Okay, and the average worker is $56,000 for the average worker. Is that too much? Is that big difference between the two huge? Or does the board of directors, which is elected by the stockholders, have a right to have that? Do you have the right to sit down there in the public sector? Do you have the right to have somebody making $400,000 here be in charge of an organization than having your lowest paid worker being paid $56,000? Then all of a sudden you have real controls over here and then the range is maybe a little bit too high. So, so you start looking at that as to what's right and what's right tends to be only in the mind of the person that's perceiving it. You have the argument in the private sector that you have a right if you have a share of stock to vote and you have the right to do that. And also if you have 10,000 or a million shares of stock to vote and maybe even be on the board of directors and then make that decision because the board's the one that makes the decision. So, so you'll see different value systems in play here. In Japan, having a, a CEO make $17 million would be almost unheard of. The typical one, you'll see them working some type of multiple above the average worker. And so you have that, so you have that as a comparison versus the United States version where you have these big inequities that are viewed by a lot of people. You really, you have this, should should the chair of Walmart be paid 24 million? Even though Walmart is the world's largest retailer, they're huge when the average worker just brought in $22,000. Issues like that, sometimes you have people suggesting no more than 20 times the average salary in a company. But in reality, they're making 287 times the average salary. So you'll have this different ratios. Some of them are idealistic in the process, but regardless, it's out there. And it's one of these things we call a controversial employee management issue. The Dodd-Frank Act was intended to give shareholders more say. And indeed, it actually does about compensation decisions. So at least we, we move forward in that regard. But still, it's a matter of it is a controversial issue. You have another one here about the NCAA. All of a sudden, the, now we're paying college athletes to, to pay different types of compensation. So that being said, it just got implemented. We'll see over the next decade how this plays out because it's a obvious athletes I did play anyway. So that being said, you have the fans that they all say that players deserve a cut of the action. So you will see this play itself out. And I'm not certain if there's any benefit to the colleges. Okay, but we'll see there'll be certainly be some benefits for some superstar athletes at the college level. Here's a few people, they're paid an awful lot and it's hard to sit down and say there's an issue here. They're earning it. People are willing to pay it, so I'm not sure it's a problem. Ronaldo there, the 105 million. Roger Federer playing tennis. He might say he's courting favor out there. Lionel Messi, one of the most brilliant soccer players in history, probably. Okay, I'm certain Ronaldo would disagree. You have, you have over here, Neymar over here. He only makes 95,000. Can't even break 100 million dollars a year, so he only makes 95.5 million. Excuse me. Okay, and LeBron James, eh, peanuts, 88.2 million a year. That's, I don't think so. That's an awful lot of money. So that being said, it's a, as you might see, I realize you think that I'm six foot four. I'm actually much shorter than that. LeBron James would be much taller than me. So I'd probably have a hard time going one-on-one -on -one with him. I think he would probably beat me in basketball without much problem. So anyhow, so this whole thing, the earnings per year, you have that. A lot of them are unionized, by the way. So pay equity. This is an issue that's been out there for a while. Women make on the average about 81% of what men earn. It's gone up quite a bit actually, and we'll see it probably go up even further. So it depends what you're out there looking at. You'll see here are some, some disparity in the, in the gender gap between the two different uh, genders. Um, it's quite a bit of difference, especially as they hit midlife in the process over here. That's an issue that's sitting out there. Probably this one we hear the most about is this sexual harassment. It's unwelcome sexual advances. You know, everybody should have a right to come into the workplace without feeling harassed. This whole thing of being bugged about somebody wanting this, some type of sexual favors is inappropriate and it doesn't belong in the workplace at all. The idea of trying to implement a no dating rule Really, I, there's so much merit because I'm coming from the background of human resources. It would be nice to sit down and not have anybody date because here's the problem. 
if they date, everything is fine until it's not. Then all of a sudden they get the two go apart and they hate each other. Sometimes I've had them in meetings where the two people are looking at each other across the table and if looks could kill, there'd be fire shooting across the table. It's not any fun to be around that whole environment. So, so that being said, how do you stop that? I'm not certain you can. You can have rules in place and everything, but the reality is that sexual harassment, everybody should feel free and safe to come into work. And we should be free of harassment and just be able to do our job. That being said, you'll see a thing out there called quid pro quo sexual harassment. Go out with me or you're fired. That's the more blunter way. There's a lot of nonverbal communication that come out. You want to come out with me? And there's no other part that comes with it. You'll see different, different levels of that. But regardless, there is a threat. There is a promise that's implied by quid pro quo. Hostile work environment, it shouldn't happen. If you're involved and have an opportunity to stop it, good do so. Sexual harassment is always unwelcome sexual advances, and it has no place in the workplace. These are all controversial, and they'll be out there for years to come, and hopefully we'll start bringing things to closure on several of these in the days, but we'll see. It depends. Our new leadership, our next generation, that's you. We'll see what you do with these tough issues, because they're all controversial. Take care.